this is one of those treat yourself moments where I finally found one of my grails at a decent price and I found the little add-on items that are incredibly rare and very, very hard to find. So today I am finally adding the team leader to my collection of Volk's Dolphy Dream Sisters behind me. And with her, I also found the Super Sailor Moon costume. It's an alternative costume that you can put on your DDS Volk's Sailor Moon doll. And I found this at a good price too. So I'm gonna do my best to show you on my top-down camera what she looks like and how to put one of these Volk's dolls together. I will also tell you a little bit about how to take care of your Volks dolls if you've never purchased one before and where I found my best prices. So when you first open your Volks doll they are going to come with no clothes on and that is to protect the material that they are made out of because their bodies are made out of this squishy material that can easily get dyes on them so they always come without any clothes already pre- you know, pre-installed. Now, when I purchased her, I also went to the Volks International website and I picked up a head cap and I also picked up some tape. This tape you can put on her limbs or wherever you're going to have dark colored costumes so that the costume colors don't end up dying or rubbing off onto the skin. Just like my other Volks girlies, you will see that she is pretty tall and she also has some really beautiful eyes as well as some gorgeous little cheek blush and she looks quite stunning in person. Each of the girls behind me are about the same height with a difference for Sailor Jupiter. Sailor Jupiter is taller than the other ones which is accurate to the character portrayal. If you ever pick up one of these Volks dolls and you prefer to switch out some of the body parts or the face itself or even the eyes, you can buy alternative parts for your Volks dolls. The limbs do pop out of place and they are very, very poseable. So one of the really special things about these dolls, not only are they highly customizable, but you can also pose them in a bunch of different ways. So on my top-down camera, you can see a whole bunch of different items laid out. First thing we have, of course, is her wig. We also, as I mentioned before, you can replace some of the pieces. We have some alternative hands. So I can replace these hands and give her specific poses if I want to. I love that it comes with these different poses for her hands. That is very, very much accurate to the character. Okay, on the front of here we have a couple of pins. I'm going to assume that these are for the earrings most likely. Where's her tiara? Oh, her tiara fell, it looks like. I wonder if it was supposed to be placed up here, but it fell off. So we do have her tiara placed back here, right there. We also have, there's her earrings, and yes, I do believe those two pins go with her earrings, so I can poke them through via a couple of holes. These two crescent moons are probably for her boots. Then we have this little heart, most likely for her choker. We have her compact, the two bun covers, her little bun shields, and we have her wand. I love that it comes with all these accessories. These are her boots. It looks like they've never been used. They look really, really nice. I can't wait to put those on my doll. And then we have her costume. Now this does come with a variety of different gloves so that you can pose with those hands and the gloves will match the way that her hands are posed. We also have the main uniform, both bows and the choker. So it looks like everything that was supposed to come with her actually did come in the box. So the previous owner definitely did a really good job of taking care of this before they resold her. The paperwork here is mainly just going to be about your Dolphy Dream doll and how to put her together. So it does go through a whole bunch of information in here in terms of how to position her earrings, which is always a struggle that's very hard to do because the skin material is pretty tough. We also have information about how to put on her uniform, the choker, the boots, as well as posing and putting on the gloves. They recommend, based on the way that this is written doing her entire uniform then putting on her wig which does make sense so after we do the wig we'll put on her tiara then put on the bun covers and pose her cool i'm so excited now i also wanted to take a look at the super sailor moon uniform and see what's included in this package so the super sailor moon fuku is different from the normal fuku this is when she gets her upgraded powers so first we have the super fuku right here we have another pair of boots which look exactly the same we also have another bow a different colored choker then we have a pair of gloves again the big big back bow i'm so excited to in install this and we have 
have the little barrettes that go in her hair, another compact, and another little heart for the choker. You will notice if you just purchase the Super Sailor Moon costume that there are a few items that are missing from the costume to make it whole. And I'm assuming that's because Volks is going to assume that you've already purchased the Sailor Moon Volks doll. So they aren't including repackages of all the other items. That includes the little shields that go on her Odongos, and that also includes the little crescent moons that go on her boots. So that's just gonna be a little note in case you do purchase the second costume. Make sure that you already have the previous costume so that you have the full accessories. Now you will notice that there is one costume that I do not have, and that is Sailor Moon's school uniform. Now I do have school uniforms for most of my Volks dolls, so I do need one for Sailor Mercury, I want to say, and I think I need one for Sailor Moon. So I do have a couple of items still on my wish list to round out my entire Volks DDS Sailor Moon collaboration lineup. I think I'm going to start with her earrings and try to put those in by hand. We'll see how successful I am. I know from experience, again, this is really hard to do because this material is rather thick that the Volks doll is made out of. So I'm going to do my best I'll be right back. Now Volks recommends if you don't have very good aim <laughs> or if you need a little bit of precision work to make a little dot using like a pen or a pencil in order to figure out where to stick these little pins through. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I haven't done that with any of my previous Volks dolls. I've just kind of eyeballed it and I've done pretty good work. So I'm going to do the same thing with her here. So as you can see, I'm making the hole first so I know exactly where it's going to go. And then I'm pulling this out just a little bit so I can put the earring on. And then I'm pressing it the rest of the way through. That way I'm not running the risk of screwing up the crescent moon earring while I'm trying to make this first pass, this first hole. Okay. Hey, I did it by hand. They look good. Awesome. And they look level and even. So happy with that. Now this is a complete uniform, so you will see that it wraps around at the bottom, and this piece is removable. One of the things I've noticed with these Volk dolls is that the uniforms are very, very much made to fit these characters pretty perfectly. So they are going to be form-fitting. You might have to adjust them a little bit to make sure that they fit perfectly, and they are going to be a little bit frustrating to put on, but you should be able to get it without too much hassle. There are buttons along the back that go all the way up to the top. You will notice a couple of extra buttons on the back. That is for her bow. Ooh, this thing is very, very tight. I had to like raise her arms up in order to get the sleeves all the way on because this is a very tight fitting costume. We have her fuku all the way on. Big bow does not include any accessories on it, so we can put it straight on. There we go. Nice and easy. So this character is going to be a little bit different in terms of how her accessories are placed because Sailor Moon has some extra accessories. So one of the first things that we're going to do is add the compact onto her bow. And I'll show you this. This is really smart engineering when it comes to this Volks doll. So here's her compact. And on the back of it, there's this little hinged arm. So you can slide this over the bow and stick it on. So from the guidebook, it looks like you should just be able to slide it on from the top and then tighten it. Now her choker has a little piece of red yarn on the front of it. So this is where the heart is supposed to slide on. There we go, perfect. Chokers on Volks dolls are just like the Fuku. They're generally pretty tight. Her boots. Both get crescent moons. There's the first one. Definitely helps in this case to have nails when you're putting these together. And there's the second one. Her hair is a little bit frizzy from being in the packaging for so long, so I think eventually I'm gonna have to brush it out and make sure to recomb these pigtails. But for the time being, given that I am just, just now getting her out of the packaging, I'm just gonna leave it be until I have everything finalized. So don't mind her hair at the moment. I know it's a little frizzy. Okay, it's a little crooked. So what I need to do is shove this side down. I'm also trying not to touch the earrings since those are such a fragile piece to any of these Volks dolls. Get your wig on there, girl. Her head's a little flat at the top and that's not necessarily like her skull. That's the wig itself, kind of weird. Like, look how flat it is at the very top of that, right there. It's a little awkward. What's left? 
the tiara and the Odongo shields and her gloves, but I have to choose which hands I want to use. Now in the booklet, they do show you some poses. For example, we have the Sailor Moon pose on the front. We also have her holding her wand on the back. And on the inside, they also show you how to pose her when she's doing the, I am Sailor Moon. So I think I wanna do her in this pose. It's one of my favorite poses from Sailor Moon. In that case, I'm going to choose the pointer glove as well as the one where she's doing this. Now, one thing I noticed on my glove, and this was just like this in the packaging, is there's a little bit of dye right there on that glove. Now that makes me wonder, oh, hey, actually. So this is kind of useful. Since I bought the Super Sailor Moon uniform, that one also came with the same glove. So that one doesn't have any stains on it. So I think I'm just gonna use this one instead and leave that one in the packaging. It's the same glove, like the same color and everything, so I can just replace it. Cool, that's useful. Okay, so we're going to need her pointer finger as well as, where is it? This one. Now, one thing you'll notice is that the fingernails are not painted. And you know, if you've watched Sailor Moon's transformation that her nails are painted. So just a little critique there. So first off, line up your hand so you don't end up putting the wrong hand on the wrong arm. That's definitely a thing that can happen. Now you should just be able to pull, kind of shift it around a little bit and pull with a little bit of force the hand off of the arm and the hinge. The new hand will fit over this hinge. You might have to move it into place. Okay, don't be afraid to use your strength with this because it's going to be very hard to place. There we go. Okay, I got it on. Whew. Man, I'm gonna work up a sweat with this video, geez. Now I can replace this hand with the pointer finger. Such pretty hands. These are very, very detailed and look really good. Oh Lord, please tell me I'm putting these on the right arms. That would be frustrating if I had to switch them out again. Got it on there, yes. Okay, and actually I think about now is an excellent example of how you put on a little bit of tape to protect the skin. You're going to tape around the section that has the red dye. So there's red dye on this glove and you'll notice that that red dye is also included on the interior. It goes all the way around. So when I put this on her, I'm going to be able to figure out where that red dye is going to fall in terms of on her body. I'm definitely not replacing these. Like this is so annoying to put on. I'm just gonna leave it as is. There we go, all right. So it's kind of weird how they made these gloves because this is a five finger glove, but the three fingers that are folded over are sewn to the bottom of the palm. So there's no way really to get those three fingers on the glove around the fingers for the hand because the hand, the fingers are molded to the plastic on the palm. So these three fingers on the glove are kind of sitting on top of the three fingers on the hand. So it looks a little bit wonky, won't lie, but I think if you're looking at her from kind of far away, it won't be as noticeable. We can see that the red is going to fall from just under this hinge to about a mm, little bit more than half an inch, maybe three fourths inches in. So I'm gonna fold her glove down and I'm going to put the tape right there. A little goes a long way, so you really don't have to buy a lot of this tape. Another option that you can purchase is having an entire bodysuit that's made in the same skin tone. I've seen a lot of people use those too, but I prefer to have the tape. Some people do prefer to put the tape on the costume as opposed to the character. And if you're worried about this stickiness of the tape coming off onto the skin, then I would advise that as well. Uh, with mine back here, I haven't had that problem. So just speaking from experience, mine are totally fine having the tape on the skin. Okay, there we go. All right, so first glove is on, looks nice. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the tape here. Only need probably less than that, really. I'm kind of overcompensating here. So really having a lot of time and patience when you are putting together your Volk stalls is going to pay off. I'm also going to put some around her thighs to protect her from the blue dye on the skirt. All right, so we've protected the skin all the way up to her arms. I do wanna put a little bit more around her choker as well as her tiara. I know from experience that those tiaras can dye or can rub off the color 
on the skin. So I don't want that to stain the skin on her. I think that happened to my Sailor Mars one, but it was just a little spot in the back. So it's not really noticeable or anything, but I am going to do that with this one. Now, as you just saw with my top-down camera, when I was doing the tiara tape, I put that directly on the back of the tiara because it's so easy to tear it by hand to the shape of the tiara. So I do have a different strategy when it comes to tape, depending on where I'm going to put it. If I'm putting it on the skin, that generally means that I don't wanna put it on the actual costume because there's way too much costume. Maybe the pleats are going to make it harder to put it on the costume itself. So I just put it on the skin. Uh, that's especially useful if you intend to switch out the costumes between different ones just I just put it on the skin but if it's coming to an accessory that's going to be used pretty often and is made out of something like plastic like the tiara then it's a lot easier to just put it on the back of the tiara so it kind of just depends on how you want to put the tape and you can also of course get a whole bodysuit like one of my friends did for her own Volk dolls now I did try the head cap as well but unfortunately it fits a little awkward on the DDS doll especially this one for Sailor Moon you could still see some of the cap underneath the wig at the front of her bangs. So I just removed it. I decided that it wasn't going to be worth it for the aesthetics that I'm looking for in my collection. If anybody has pro tips on how to put the head cap on your Volks DDS Sailor Moon doll, please let me know. So we have our Sailor Moon character completely done and finalized, and I think she looks absolutely gorgeous. Now you will notice with your DDS dolls that they are extremely poseable. So you you can switch them around based on where their hinges allow you to and they're stiff enough that if you leave them like on a stand for example they're going to stay in that motion they're not going to end up like flopping or leaning over or anything like that I've had those ones behind me up on their stands for a very long time and they're still perfectly in those poses before I switch her out I want to get her on her stand and see how she looks she's really tall so it's kind of hard to show her on camera <laughs> unless I I have her behind me, which she is going to join the rest of the Sailor Guardians pretty, pretty soon. I'm very excited to put her up there. It's going to be like a moment of completeness for my collection behind me. So that's very exciting. So she first originally came out back in 2017, but the prices for her since then have gone up. She has fluctuated a little bit. I've seen this doll as much as $2,000 to around 900. Now, if you are shopping for one of these online, there's a few different places that you can go. If you wanna shop with somebody here in the United States, you can sometimes find her on eBay or Mercari. I have seen a few people reselling theirs on Facebook Marketplace as well. If you do choose to go that route, definitely pay with goods and services over PayPal so you don't get screwed over because it is a lot of money. Now, my suggestion and how I found her was by going through Japanese. Japanese marketplaces. The place that I found her was via Zen Market. So Zen Market only charges a flat fee of like three or 500 yen. I'll put that down below in the notes as well. So that means even if she was the yen equivalent to $2,000, I would only be paying a few dollars for Zen Market to be able to purchase her and then ship her to me. I do have to pay shipping as well. But I waited and I waited and I waited for years until I found her. She ended up going on sale and I found her for around $1,000, which is not as cheap as retail, but it's also not the most expensive I've seen. Since I decided to go through the Japanese route of buying her through somebody that lives in Japan and then having it shipped internationally through the Zen Market marketplace. That means that I wasn't paying the crazy reseller prices that you find on eBay. Oftentimes, when it comes to these Japanese products that were never released overseas, you'll find that a lot of those products are scalped at really high prices on eBay, but if you can find them through a Japanese reseller, you'll have a much better experience. I have also seen her available in store over at Mandrake. Specifically, I saw her in the store multiple times at the Mandrake in Akihabara in Japan. So if you are looking to buy her like using some yen while you're traveling around in Japan and you wanna just carry her home instead of paying shipping costs from Japan, so you have a checked bag, then you could totally do that too. Just make sure that your bag is insured through your credit card company or just make sure that she safely gets home somehow. But one of the bonuses is if you do buy her in person, while you're in like a mandrake store in Japan, 
uh, those are tax free. So you just show them your passport before you leave the store. They'll look at your receipt and then they'll give you your money back for whatever taxes you paid for the items. So that can save you some money too. So you do have options. Luckily, a lot of people have resold their original ones from 2017. Uh, it is a lot harder to find one that is brand new. A lot of folks like myself are open box collectors. So keep an eye out for ones that don't have all the accessories or don't include everything that they should or might have damage because sometimes you do run into those problems with the Volks dolls. So with all of that out of the way, the other thing that I wanted to share with you is finding the costume. Now I would say that the super costume for Super Sailor Moon is even harder to find online as well as in stores. This thing is extremely rare. It's very rare that I actually see it available by itself, let alone being available to purchase with her. So I have seen this priced at extremely high rates. I ended up buying mine for, I want to say a couple hundred bucks, which is still really expensive for a costume for an outfit, but I've also seen this thing run up between 400 to 600 dollars USD. So the costume is extremely hard to find. It's more rare. I I would say than finding the Sailor Moon Volks doll. And with all of that said, I still haven't found her school uniform at a decent price, let alone found it online just by itself available for purchase. So I'm still looking for that. The Volks DDS dolls are the most beautiful dolls that I have in my collection. They are absolutely gorgeous. They are made to look so, so nice and they're really impressive figures. So if you want a piece that really stands out in your collection as kind of a focal point, then the Volks dolls are one of those items, especially if you're able to get all five. But they are extremely expensive. So if you are not comfortable paying $1,000 per doll, then it's something that you could definitely skip, especially if you're not a really big doll collector. I am not a very big doll collector. I don't have a lot of dolls in my collection, except for like the few that you see behind me here. But these were an exception when it comes to this collection in this room. <laughs> I think that her costume is really nicely made. I love that it fits so well. The gloves always seem to look a little awkward and it is hard to put together. It's a little bit frustrating. Uh, one thing you will notice is that both of the crescent moon earrings on mine fell off. So it looks like they are extremely, extremely delicate. So I'm going to have to just super glue the crescent moon piece back onto her pins, the little pins that go through her ears. That's kind of annoying, but they're tiny pieces and that's the most frustrating part of putting together one of these Volk dolls. The other character's earrings are a lot easier because they aren't little dangly pieces, so they're not as fragile. So now that we have seen her with her Sailor Guardians and we've seen her in her really cute Sailor Moon uniform, let's go ahead and switch her out to the Super Sailor Moon uniform and see what that one looks like. So her new choker does get a different heart. So we feed that heart onto this string that's located on the choker. Just like the previous one, this is going to slide onto her in the exact same way. Okay, we've got the fuku on. Go ahead and buckle it in place. Again, this fuku is very, very tight on her, so it is going to be a bit of a struggle to put it on. Okay, whew, fuku in place. Finally. <laughs> this fuku is so tight on her. Bow is in place. Then we have the very small little compact, which goes over the bow. Such a smart way to keep the bow right where it's supposed to be. A new choker. Now with this one, she actually comes with a second compact that you're going to put at the bottom of her fuku around that belt. So that goes right here. And then we have her hair barrettes. There are two of them and they are shaped just like a regular pair of barrettes. You should have a right and a left one. And the last thing that's going to go on her is a new bow in the back. Now the cool thing about this bow is it has metal framing inside the bow itself. So you can set this up in a way that you prefer to make it look like it's flowing in the wind if you wanted to. And that definitely helps with shaping it and posing her in whatever motion that you want her to be in. Okay, so now that we've had some practice with the regular Sailor Moon Fuku and the dressing this Volks doll, the Super Sailor Moon Fuku in uniform was not that hard to put on her since we already had everything else in place. I really like that they included so many accessories with her, including the really cute little hair barrettes, which honestly are pretty loose. 
So once you put them in place, just don't mess with them too much. They're gonna easily fall out. But I really like the attention to detail here. I think one of the things I would have preferred is if they had more of a gradient detail in her skirt, like we see in a lot of the original art. I think that would have been a lot prettier. I do like that they included the metal piece in the back bow so that you can make it look a little bit more flowy so it's not just drooping behind her. It is folded in the box so you'll probably want to steam or iron out the crease in the bow behind her. But overall, I think this costume looks absolutely gorgeous on Super Sailor Moon. Usagi looks like such a champ and she looks like she's about to face some bad guys. Now, of course, if you want to switch out her hands, you can totally do so and have her hold her wand. I didn't do that in this particular use case because I really like this pose. It's one of my favorite poses, as I mentioned previously. So I think I'm gonna leave her like this because I think it looks super cute. But overall, I have to say that I am thrilled to finally have the Sailor Moon Volks Dolphy Dream Sisters doll in my collection. She was missing for a very long time. It's been quite a few years that I've wanted her. So I'm very happy that she's finally joining her Sailor Guardians back here in my collection room. So going forward, you're going to see her in every single video because she'll be hanging out right back there. <laughs> she is way too pretty and way too expensive to hide. Now, for the moment I've been waiting for, let's go ahead and put her with the rest of the Sailor Guardians. I'm so excited! This is so cool! Oh man, she has been missing in my collection room for such a long time. And this is a special moment for me. Da, 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 da. There she is. Oh, right in front of Naoko Takeuchi's signature, right behind her. Okay, what do you think of Sailor Moon and the Sailor Guardians on my back wall for my collection room? I think with the lighting behind them and with the key proplicas around them and the figure arts, I think they look so pretty and so nostalgic. It's just beautiful. This is one of my favorite shelves in my collection room, and it's the first time that you're seeing it in this completed form factor. I know that I'm kind of hiding them behind me, but this is an image that I had in my head for years of how I wanted to create this Volks shelf for my collection room. I wanted to put lighting behind them so it looks kind of like it's glowing. So you have that like bubbly aesthetic behind them, very much like the 1990s anime. And I also wanted to feature some art as well as a signature by Naoko. That's really important to me. And having something up here that was very personable, like Sailor Snubs, my little sign. It just makes me so incredibly happy to see it all put together now. So Yay! I have them all! I'm so happy! I'm sure I'll get questions, so if you were curious about where I got this dress, this was from Hot Topic. I got it into medium. It was 50 bucks, and it came out quite a while back in... I want to say it came out last year, so this is very much like a fall Halloween vibes black lady dress and it has pockets and it's made out of this beautiful velvet material. I have more information about this dress over on my Instagram, so follow me over there. I'm at Sailor Snubs. And let me know in the comments if you have the Volks dolls. If you have questions about them, I'm more than happy to show you them all together in another video and do like a tutorial. I'm always willing to make new videos for y'all, so just let me know what you're looking for. Make sure to subscribe if you are not subscribed yet. I do giveaways, I do a lot of tutorials about how to get these items for good prices. And I also review a lot of the Sailor Moon merchandise that is coming out, as well as other anime and Japanese culture items. So if you're ever looking for some non-biased reviews, then definitely subscribe. And that is it for now. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Jane.